okay so we'll be starting with our next topic that is virology so virology you could hardly get one or two questions but this year since covid crisis is going on you can expect definitely one or two questions from covid i hope so we'll start the discussion so to start with uh, basically to start with basically virus can be either non enveloped or enveloped so in non enveloped you have dna viruses and rna viruses the dna can be re remembered with a mnemonic pap parvo adeno papova rna with a mnemonic park picorna astro calci rio virus enveloped could be herpes influenza chickenpox virus and others shapes of viruses as per we have bullet shaped that is rabies brick shaped that is pox filamentous that could be ebola or marburg rod shaped as tobacco 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 mosaic virus and space vehicle shaped as in adenovirus so this is based on the shape then the viruses can cause something that's called as intracytoplasmic inclusion bodies and it can affect the nucleus also so intra nuclear inclusion bodies so we're going to see them so when they affect the cytoplasm of a person so it could cause something called negri bodies which can be seen in rabies guarnieri bodies which can be seen in either smallpox or vaccinia passion bodies which can be seen in smallpox or vaccinia bollinger bodies as seen in fowlpox hp bodies as seen in molluscum contagiosum and uh, a mix of intracytoplasmic and intra nuclear could be seen in measles that is called as warthin finkelstein bodies that is seen in measles so these are straight points that you you should memorize then uh, tourist bodies are found in yellow fever cow dry type a and type b are there these bodies could be found in different formats but whenever we talk about cow dry you need to remember herpes zoster so basically cow dry means you should remember herpes zoster that is very important then we will start with the herpes diseases <coughs> So the herpes diseases could be HSV one, the types HSV two, HSV uh, three, four, HSV four, HSV five, six, seven, and eight. So these are the types. So you have to remember HSV one means we are talking about the mouth ulcer. HSV two means we are talking about the genital ulcer. So basically, anything above the hip is going to be HSV one. Anything below the hip is going to be HSV two. So hip is the region you should consider so anything about the lip uh, hip like mouth or anything about the waist okay so hsv2 is by trans transmission is by sexual route so hsv2 is more temperature sensitive it's more virulent and it's more drug resistant so out of hsv1 and 2 hsv2 plays a major role in your examinations then comes hsv3 that is chicken pox virus hhv4 is epstein barr virus hhv5 is cytomegalovirus 6 and 7 are exanthema subitum 8 is kaposi sarcoma so all of these names these are very important for mcqs then we will see a few of them so one is cytomegalovirus that we talked about here and another is epstein barr virus that we talked about here very important these two are So the cytomegalovirus is the largest member of the herpes virus family. So you can see something called owl's owl's eye appearance in this, and eight typical lymphocytes in blood. Eight typical lymphocytes would be positive. Eight typical lymphocytosis would be seen. The same eight eight typical lymphocytosis would be seen in the Epstein Barr virus also. The Epstein Barr virus is the one which is causing something called infectious mononucleosis (IM). Infectious mononucleosis. So when a patient has atypical lymphocytosis positivity you should think these two in your mind cytomegalovirus and epstein barr virus in your mcq now what is going to differentiate them in your mcq is going to be this paul bunnell test if the paul bunnell test is positive it is going to be epstein barr virus so direct mcq atypical lymphocytes are seen in so it could be epstein barr virus it could be cytomegalovirus so the differentiation point is this paul bunnell test so this point is highly essential for your mcq 
I hope I'm clear in this. So this Epstein Barr virus is also known as kissing disease. It spreads by kissing. So when they are talking about kissing, you need to remember Epstein Barr virus and also meningococcemia. Meningococcemia in your MCQ. So look specifically if there is any signs of meningism in the question. Any signs of meningism in your question? Look specifically. Is it a mother to child kiss? Um, looks uh, something like uh, if they are talking about a bacteria or not. So if they are talking about the gram stain, if they are talking about the bacteria, anything regarding the bacteria, you should direct your MCQ to meningococcemia. Even though Epstein Barr virus is known as kissing disease, at this point you should consider meningococcemia. That is the very important reason why I placed cytomegalovirus and Epstein-Barr virus together. So with atypical lymphocytes, you should consider these two in mind. With kissing, you should consider this one along with meningitis, meningococcemia in your mind. So please be careful. Next. This point, CD4 is to CD8 ratio reverses transiently. With this point, you should consider AIDS because there also CD4 to CD8 ratio reverses. But here, it does not reverse transiently. It is permanently reversed. Permanently reversed. I repeat again. Yeah. Uh, with owl eye, you should remember orphan Annie eye. Orphan Annie eye. So orphan Annie eye is seen in papillary cancer. Papillary cancer of thyroid, papillary cancer thyroid. So owl eye appearance, you should compare with orphan any eye appearance. So I repeat, this two small boxes comprises a lot of differentiation in your questions. The first is the comparison between the atypical lymphocytosis. So you get atypical lymphocytosis, you don't know it is CMV or EBV, you would look for Paul Bunnell test positivity. So if Paul Bunnell test positivity, it is infectious mononucleosis, that is Epstein-Barr virus problem. Then with this point, that is CD4 is to CD8 reverses, you are going to compare it along with AIDS. So look, is it trans transient or not? So transient means they would be telling few months back there was CD4 is to CD8 reversal, now the CD4 is to CD8 is normal so that is transient if they're not talking about it you should go for the AIDS that is important then comes kissing disease kissing disease means you should compare Epstein-Barr virus with meningococcemia then comes owl's eye appearance owl's eye appearance means you should compare it with orphan any eye nuclein orphan any eye orphan eye so this is seen in papillary cancer so four different ways of confusing you in this question is possible so always in your virology you should keep this small box in top of anything else I, am i clear here yes good <clears throat> now, okay, before jumping to other things, what we missed here is the adenovirus table. So, this adenovirus table, if you see, it's nothing but different types of adenoviruses and what do they cause? So, the diseases. Out of all the diseases, the most important one is going to be swimming pool conjunctivitis. Swimming pool conjunctivitis is caused by adenovirus 3714. For your MCQ, you need to know this point very well. So that is important. Then we have something called teratogenic viruses, the viruses that can destroy the baby. They are CMV, rubella, herpes, and varicella zoster. Now, since we read about this CMV already, we'll compare the CMV along with the rubella. So if you see this rubella, 
when you get this question you can easily note that there is a triad that is cataract deafness and patent ductus arteriosus pda so there is a heart problem there is a ear problem there is a eye problem so <clears throat> Along with that, there could be something, this extent, extended congenital rubella syndrome. There could be a heart problem that is many, uh, myocarditis. There could be a liver problem, hepatosplenia megaly. There could be a bone problem like bone lesion also. That is expanded congenital rubella syndrome. But bare minimum, this point you should know. Cataract deafness and PDA. Now, rubella can cause uh, changes in the CT scan head of the baby. Cytomegalovirus can cause CT scan head changes um, the calcifications in an x-ray calcification in x-ray or ct scan calcification in brain of the baby there's one more thing that can cause calcification that is toxoplasmosis toxo so when you are reading cmv or rubella you should remember toxo as well so these three should go in hand in hand okay so mental retardation is not seen here so, but you need to know calcification in CT scan in brain means you should go for CMV, rubella and toxoplasmosis. So, these three should be remembered. So, there's just an additional point. Anyway, so next is smallpox. So, this is only DNA virus which replicates in cytoplasm. It is eradicated globally in 1978. So, vaccination is the only prevention from this. Parvovirus B19 we have. This causes something called, it's called as fifth disease of Roseola infantum. It causes something called slap cheek appearance. And also it causes something called aplastic crisis in sickle cell anemia. Aplastic crisis in sickle cell anemia. You can forget about the thalassemia, spherocytosis, hereditary spherocytosis, you can forget. But sickle cell anemia, you should never forget. Aplastic crisis in sickle cell anemia. That is important. So parvovirus, you have fifth disease, slabbed cheek sickle cell anemia so if you see everything looks like a s so if you remember this s you can say that it is five it is s and it is s sickle cell anemia and slapped cheek so this is very important okay next is influenza virus influenza virus most common manifestation of upper respiratory tract infection but that too bacterial pneumonia is most common H1N1 is swine flu, H5N1 is bird flu or avian flu. Then we have mumps. Mumps means you should remember parotid gland swelling, parotitis. Mumps, parotitis. Second attack rate is almost 85%. You have three complications out of which you can ignore pancreatitis. Mainly two called comp complications. The swelling of the inflammation of either ovary or the testis, epididymo orchitis or ophritis, and then the uh, inflammation of the brain, aseptic meningitis. Then in contrast with measles, so measles have secondary attack rate of almost 90%. So you see something called coptic spot, uh, which is seen in the molar tooth, opposite upper second molar tooth. Uh, what in fingerly cells are seen? We have already seen this uh, seen this. MCQ. Then comes RSV, respiratory syncytial virus. So it is most commonly it causes bronchiolitis and pneumonia and otitis media. Most common precipitating factor for acute asthma is RSV. So treatment is ribavirin and bronchodilators, prophylaxis is pilevizumab. So again, I'm not going to talk about treatment anymore. Next is polio virus. Now, polio virus, only these different types, and th these are all the MCQs. All the MCQs are piled up here. You need to know this is of three types, type 1, type 2, type 3. Out of which type 1 is the most common. Type 1 is associated with paralysis most of the time. Most common type of epidemics is again type 1. Most difficult to eradicate is again type 1. Whereas type 2 is most antigenic. It causes endemic polio. Type 3 causes vaccine-related polio, vaccine-associated paralysis. Okay, so in polio, if you see, the most common muscle that undergoes complete paralysis is going to be tibialis anterior. Most common affected muscle is going to be quadriceps. Most common muscle in hand affected is opponent's polysis. 
so these three points are also important so overall this polio entire point is important very less questions uh, appeared from polio polio one more question that came in polio affect anterior horn cells anterior horn cells polio affects anterior horn cells okay this is one of the uh, very important mcq anterior horn cells affected and one more thing is polio causes descending paralysis paralysis is descending so descending paralysis whereas uh, uh, so there is something called guillain barre syndrome gbs that causes ascending paralysis so this is uh, in contrast very important so those are not those are not microbiological mcq so as as long as microbiology is concerned these types matter a lot so then jumping to the rabies rabies means lissa virus so source is saliva of the rabid animal so by bite or even by when there is a, a damaged skin even by lick it can spread when the bite is near the neck it is going to spread very fast so what you see pathologically is the negri bodies that we saw already negri bodies the spread of rabies the speed of its progression in sensory nerve is 3 mm per hour and the complications would be arrhythmia bronco pneumonia cerebral edema diffuse axonal neuropathy stress ulcer mallory weiss syndrome one complication i would like you to remember during that exam is diffuse axonal injury diffused axonal neuropathy so this is the most specific complication i want you to remember diffuse axonal neuropathy so rabies means you should remember diffuse axonal neuropathy so that is very essential for your examination so this is a broad broad collection of all the different complications but this will outstand all diffuse axonal neuropathy so because brain is affected only the, because of that only patient is having uh, that photophobia hydrophobia and all in rabies so the examiner would mostly stress you with the uh, complication that is happening in the brain okay then it is hepatitis so in hepatitis there is yeah so in hepatitis is a b c d e and g type g is mostly not um, a favorite part in mcq so we we'll go with a b c d and e okay so regarding hepatitis a the original name is enterovirus 72 so this hepatitis a is sensitive to chlorination it is the most common cause of acute hepatitis in children it causes spiky fever and igm hiv will be positive in laboratory test so overall in hiv hepatitis a virus i would like you to focus on few key points only number 1 is spiky fever that is very important number 2 is acute hepatitis in children number 3 is igm hiv positive at least these three points must be in your fingertips while you are going for your exam so these are very important then we go to the hepatitis b there are a lot of mcq points when it comes to hepatitis b and c so hepatitis b means all the markers are going to come and you are going to memorize it no matter what so first if the person is infected you are going to find this hbe antigen positive that's what you are going to find in that patient so infectivity marker is hbe ag uh, antigen so if the patient is vaccinated you are going to find anti hbs antigen in the patient and if the patient has recovered you are going to find anti hbs ag along with igg so igg talks about past infection and recovery so igg anti hbc so these three i think these three would be outstanding among all the Uh, markers in given in this table so marker for infectivity there is current inf infectivity marker for recovery marker for vaccination so these three is highly essential now the diagnostic marker was a old question recently did not appear the diagnostic marker is igm anti hbc which means now he is having acute hepatitis b so igm talks about acute igg talks about past that is chronic or past infection igm for acute igg for past infection okay so i think you can ignore this replicative phase qualitative and quantitative marker for the mean time if you will be able to memorize that is fine but don't overload your brain first virological marker detectable is hbs ag highly repeated mcq hbs ag diagnosis 
in window period, which means you can't find by any other marker, it is anti HBC. Anti HBC. That is diagnosis in window period. So these many points are there in this table. So other than, yeah. So I would say for your examination purpose, the most important are one is this HBS AG and then these markers. So these four should serve as the most important points in this table. So this is about H, hepatitis B. Then we jump to the next topic that is going to be hepatitis C. So hepatitis C means you should know that um, hepatitis uh, C is a chronic problem. So C for chronicity, C for cancer, chronic cancer is hepatitis C. Uh, so there is also something called uh, co-infection that could be hep hepatitis G virus, but I don't think so. This question is going to appear in your examination. <clears throat> so 80% of chronicity cases are by hepatitis C. So anti-hepatitis C in those patients, you can detect almost in 95% of the cases. So anti-HCV is something that you must memorize when it comes to hepatitis C. And also HCV RNA will be positive. So HCV RNA, that is anti-HCV, you can see, for example, if you see anti-HCV in blood, but HCV RNA is not positive, which means the patient has recovered. So anti-HCV, anyway, even he recovered or not, it does not matter. Uh, you're going to find anti-HCV anyways. So when they are talking about the diagnosis of this patient, they are talking only about the HCV RNA. You should be very, very clear in this MCQ. I repeat. Anti-HCV you can, anti-HCV you can anyhow find in those patients. Almost 95% of the patients you can find. Even if they recovered, you can find. But what you have to do is an additional test that is going to be HCV RNA. That is going to be HCV RNA, which is very, very essential. HCV RNA. This test is going to determine is the patient infected now or not. Okay, next is hepatitis B. Hepatitis B means, uh, sorry, hepatitis D. Hepatitis D means you should know that uh, it it almost um, appears along with hepatitis B. So if it's a co-infection, there's going to be IgM positivity. If there's a super infection, there's going to be IgG positivity. So in lab, you're going to check HDB antigen test, HDB antigen test. So this is important. Okay, but overall in entire hepatitis B and C are most important. So hepatitis E is the next one. It is the most important cause of fulminant hepatitis in pregnancy and the most common cause of hepatitic encephalopathy in pregnancy and also most common form of acute hepatitis in adults in India. So forget about hepatitis G, you need to know these points. So you need to know that hepatitis A or E, these are you are going to get it through fecal oral route. That is through food and water. Food and water bond. Fecal oral route. It's contamination. Okay. Whereas hepatitis B and C, you need to know it is highly chance of a lot of needle pricks, uh, sexual contact, uh, blood transfusion, those modes. Okay. That's it about hepatitis. Now we can go to the next one that is HIV. So HIV means uh, previously on 2013, 14, 15, in those years, they were giving somewhat importance to the structure of HIV. Uh, but after that, that, this type of question did not appear in FMG till now. So what questions that appear previously is you need to know HIV as an antigen, has some receptors and some co-receptors along with it. So you need to know this an antigen. Uh, could be envelope antigen or cell shell antigen for which some receptors will be there. So polymerase antigen, shell antigen, envelope antigens could be there. So you need to know that uh, the spike antigen is GP120. That is the principal antigen. This was MCQ. And in the same year, one more question came. That was um, the core antigen. That is P24. That is a core antigen. So you need to know transmembrane protein is GP41. Spike protein or spike antigen is GP120. Core antigen is P24. This is very important. So if you don't remember any other antigen, that is fine. 
at least these seem to remember. So one more MCQ that came is co-receptors. Co-receptors are CXCR4 and CCR5. These are co-receptors that you need to know. I hope this is fine. Then, uh, the types of HIV could be HIV 1 and 2, out of which 1 is very, very important. Why? It is commonest in India. That's why it is very important in your exam. So, this have a lot of groups, M and O, P, out of which group M is the most common worldwide. And then it has subtypes A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K. So, from A to K, out of which in India, type C is most important. So, if you don't remember what is in the world, that's okay. But in India, type C is important. So, M and C. Type C. These two are very important. Okay. Then <clears throat> HIV2 is less pathogenic. So I don't think so. You'll be getting questions from HIV2. So if you have to screen the patient, you are going to do ELISA. If you have to confirm that the patient is having HIV, you're going to check for Western blot. If you have to know how much the viral load the patient is having, you are going to check for RNA PCR. So here is the time, window period time, uh, which is the time between primary infection and antibiotic detection. This itself is MCQ, last year MCQ. Window period is time between primary infection and antibody detection. That is previous year MCQ. Uh, but the time in window period is important. So ELISA screening 22 days, Western blot again 22 days, RNA PCR will take 12 days. So that is the time between the primary infection and antibody detection. This much time it might take. Okay. Then what we check in this patient is other than viral load, we check for the CD4 count. So that talks about this immune system. So when the CD4 count is low, which means the immune system is damaged, the patient is at risk of getting any of these infections. He could get a lot of infections, but we are focusing mainly when the immune system is totally destroyed. That is less than 250. So here's the baseline that we kept 250 and then we are reducing it from here. So 250, 200, 150, 150. So this is what uh, we are focusing about because this is what the MCQ will be focusing about. So the first risk the patient is going to get as the CD4 keeps on dropping is at 250, he's going to get something called cocoidiodomycosis, which we already saw. So here the drug of choice is going to be fluconazole. Cocoidiodomycosis, we are going to give fluconazole. When it further declines 200, he is at additional risk of getting pneumocystitis. When, it is, when he is at further risk, uh, when it further drops to 150, he is at risk of histoplasmosis. So already histoplasmosis mimics TB. So TB is one of the opportunistic infection in HIV. So when at 150, when a patient is getting histoplasmosis, uh, there is a more additional risk that you can mistake it as TB. So that kind of presentation it can show. Uh, one more thing I need to say at histoplasmosis, it is also called as darling disease. Histoplasmosis is called as darling disease. So that is one of the important MCQ. Then when the CD count further reduces, it could cause toxoplasmosis. When it further reduces to 50, it could cause CMB or MAVM complex. So here, if you don't remember the MAVM complex, that is fine. But at least CMB you should remember. So overall, if I would rate this box, I would rate this as the one of the most and most high yield in virology. In the entire virology, uh, in HIV, the CD4 box is very, very, very important. In entire hepatitis, hepatitis B and C are important. In entire HIV, the CD4 is very important. Then comes the most common in AIDS. That is, when you take Kaposi sarcoma, it is the most common neoplasm that is happening in AIDS patients. And it is the most common cause of pleural effusion in AIDS patients. But if there are chances that you might not have Kaposi sarcoma in your examination, um, so they can ask what is the cause of pleural effusion in AIDS patient, you need to remember bacterial pneumonia. If there is no Kaposi sarcoma, you should be very clear about this. That's why I provided both these points here. Then pneumonia. Pneumonia in AIDS patients is most common lung infection in AIDS patient is pneumonia. The most common genital infection is going to be herpes. Fungal eye infection is going to be candida or cryptococcus. Lymphoma is going to be immunoblastic lymphoma. Opportunistic infection, as I said, TB. TB I stressed a bit before. So TB is the most common opportunistic infection. Endogenous endophthalmitis or keratitis. You need to know when the eye is affected, you're talking about either candida or crypto. So here we talk about candida. 
space occupying lesion when brain is affected we are going to talk about toxoplasmosis or crypto so you need to remember it is toxoplasmosis here so space occupying lesion means so brain is affected i said and again meningitis toxoplasma and crypto so crypto is for meningitis we already saw the space occupying lesion means toxoplasmosis and last is diarrhea so diarrhea cryptosporidium so i think you can ignore this point most common cause of diarrhea you can ignore i think you can ignore this point most common uh, lymphoma you can ignore that is still fine i guess but the other points must be memorized totally so overall as i said this opportunistic infection table all the cd4 counts and all these most common points i think this opportunistic infection table is totally a high yield 100% important from virology then So then, here comes the most ultimate topic that we are going to discuss today. This is going to be about the coronavirus. So coronavirus, you need to know, first First of all, it's the first time you are going to get it in MCQ. So, but by any corner from one end to another end, you should be well versed with coronavirus. So this is a picture of coronavirus. I don't know if they are going to give a picture of coronavirus or not. I don't know how they are going to frame a question. But whatever possible ways they could frame, I have made my own self notes for this and I provided here. So you need to know, number one, it, the capsule is helical in shape. The helical capsule, uh, this coronavirus is enveloped totally. So enveloped, linear, positive and single stranded RNA is there. So single stranded RNA is there. So I think I would stress more on this single stranded RNA. So this is one of the place where uh, if I would be the questionnaire, I'll be focusing on. So it causes common cold for several years, out of which uh, there's also when it causes worse infection, it could cause SARS and MERS. So transmission, we all know it is a respiratory droplet infection. So risk factor, we know uh, recent travel history. Uh, that's what is being going on right now. Recent travel history, sick contacts, immunosuppression, and healthcare workers, out of which I think we are really on high risk category, I think, healthcare workers for the meantime. Then, yeah. Then we need to look for the pathophysiology. When you look for the pathophysiology, um, I could say what happens in COVID, one word that is killing uh, all the patients I could say is a cytokine storm that is happening in the patient. This is what I can focus on. So in COVID patient, there is enough cytokine storm to destroy the lung totally. So cytokine storm. Uh, if I will be a questionnaire, this, this is the word I'll be focusing for in your examination. But still, uh, I think we should know the entire pathophysiology. So sars go. CO2, CO2, that's what is uh, spreading for the meantime. So it affects its cellular entry via attachment of its virion, that is spike protein, S protein, to the ACE2 receptor, which is found on the alveolar cells of the lung epithelium. So this is the underlying uh, reason for the development of the respiratory symptoms as the commonest presentation is in COVID-19. So the symptom exactly, when you get this infection, in about 5.2 days, you're going to start with having the symptoms. So uh, the infectivity period is very important. So the infectivity period, you can say for 14 days. That's why we are isolated for 14 days. So this is the time period in which you can infect others. So once this is crossed, the chance of you infecting others might be very, very lesser. But at the same time, if it keeps on increasing within yourself, it is going to destroy your lung parenchyma for all. So that is one possibility, one of the possibilities that could be there from the COVID point of view. Okay, so the patients infected with COVID-19 will show higher leukocyte number, abnormal respiratory finding, increased levels of plasma pro-inflammatory cytokines. So as I said, higher level of cytokines, so cytokine storm, that, that single word you should focus more on. So organs affected, of course, lungs, liver, sinus, intestines. So in intestines, patient can have several bouts of diarrhea. Okay, then uh, we have a respiratory phase and previous, uh, going before to the respiratory phase is a prodrome phase. Uh, this phase, at this phase, many patients will recover. 
actually. So prodrome in which fever is almost there for 90% chills, headache, myalgia, nausea, vomiting, headache, along with even loose stools. So loose stools, loose stools, tiredness, these can also be prodrome. So what we concern when it comes to MCQ is the respiratory phase. So patient would have non-productive cough, shortness of breath and sore throat. So this is almost the 90% age of symptoms. So when you look at the chest x-ray of the patient, you're going to find bilateral pulmonary infiltrates. This is one of the patient of uh, SARS-CoV-2 case. This is the picture. So you could see here. So you can see the infiltrates all over here. You can see the infiltrates all over here. This is one of the patient with COVID x-ray. Okay, and this is a CT picture which shows ground glass opacities over here. The ground glass opacities can be seen in CT lung. So these two I just provided, but I would recommend you to see as much as possible for the COVID related chest x-rays in the, um, you, could, you could use Radiopedia or you could use any other website to check those x-rays, x-rays and CT scan. So that is very important. Um, so CT scan, not just ground glass opacities can be seen. There can also be air space consolidation. There can also be bronchovascular thickening. But I think for exam, they might focus more on ground gas opacities in CT scan and in an X-ray bilateral pulmonary infiltrates. So I strongly believe that when the first time they might be asking question, they might ask maybe probably two questions, I hope. So one might be basically about the information of COVID. So what is it? Uh, what does it do? Or, and the second way of asking the question is going to be the picture based. Instead of asking what exactly is seen on x-ray, they might give an x-ray or a CT. I think this picture is highly essential. So we know as on date, this was um, updated on April 2020. So as on that date, even now, even till now, there is no treatment, actual treatment that is uh, there. So it is all supportive treatment only. So the basic things we can do is WHO's ideas that you can wash your hands after sneezing, coughing, when caring for the sick before, so whatever. So you have to wash your hands. That's what WHO says. So I don't know if they're going to give that logo or not, but the complication is important. There are several complications. ARDS, acute MI, sepsis, AKI, multi-organ failure, plural efficient, out of which I would focus on ARDS. And I would strongly say this might definitely appear in your exam. ARDS might definitely appear. Sooner or later, ARDS is somewhere they would focus on. So I think that is very essential. Is everyone clear with COVID? Yeah, very good. So uh, the, here I just, uh, these are just as per government of India, this is Ministry of India's Health and uh, Ministry of Health and Family Welfare Directorate. So these are the definitions that is released by the Indian government regarding these uh, COVIDs. So I, I let you read these definitions by yourself. I don't want to take a lot of time here. I would directly go to the important dates to remember regarding COVID-19. So this is highly important than the definition itself. So you need to know the date. I think the date, uh, we, we all know it started in Wuhan, China. But I think the date that I would focus more on is this. The first case of COVID-19 is reported in Kerala. The date is January 30. So in this entire table, you will have to read out all the dates, but this date I'm going to focus more on. And then uh, on 11th March, 2020, COVID-19 was declared pandemic by WHO. I think these two are very, very essential in this table. So yes, Wuhan, China is very important, but since everyone knows it, I don't think so. That might be a question. I don't know. Uh, if that might be a question or not, but these two points are highly, highly essential. So I would focus on these two points in this table. But anyway, I comprised all the points. This was taken from the WHO, all the points till date. So after 3rd April 2020, there was not much updates. So the only updates that we are getting from WHO is regarding the vaccines, but still there is no vaccine released. So that update is not able, I'm not able to uh, get that up, uh, update for you. So all we could focuses still 
April 3rd, 2020. That will be the most latest till now. So that ends our virology. We could start with parasitology. Is everyone clear till now? Till now, I think virology, very minimal questions have come till now. But maybe they might focus more on virology this time because of this COVID. So I hope none of you will miss any points in COVID. I can discuss more and more clinically in COVID, but this is not the time for it. So all you need is a clear picture of what is essential for MCQ. I hope I have given all the nook and corners that you need to know for MCQ when, it rega when it's regarding COVID. Is that clear? Okay, so we are starting with parasitology. So parasitology, I didn't make it a huge topic because hardly one or two questions again you are going to get from this. So parasites could be amoeba, flagellates, cocoidian or pyroplasmida. So these are the four types out of which lot of um, where it is lot of uh, organisms are going to fall for. So here is a list of uh, important points from the parasites. So I could say uh, here some points still we didn't read the names of the parasite but still we'll directly go to the jump to the topic. So I could say the largest parasite is Balantidium coli. That's where I will focus more on and the smallest uh, tapeworm H. nana. Uh, the most common protozoan parasite is going to be T. gondii, Trypanosoma gondii. So these three, I think I would stress more on in this table. But still, uh, reading the entire table will be helpful for you. Uh, this appears maybe once in three or four years, one question from this table. So focusing on this table will not be a waste of time for you. So please focus here. Then jumping to the common names. So there are a lot of names for these tapeworms. Fish tapeworm, beef tapeworm, pork, dog, dwarf, liver, lung, blood, and giant tapeworm. So these words you must memorize. Fish tapeworm is D. lactam. Beef tapeworm is T. saginata. Pork tapeworm is Tinea solium. Dog tapeworm is Echinococcus granulosus. Dwarf tapeworm is H. nana. Liver tapeworm is Hephaestiola hepatica. Lung tapeworm is Paragnomus westermani. Blood tapeworm is Cystosoma hematobium. Giant round worm is Ascaris lambricoides, out of which the most common things that appear in exam are all this beef, pork, fish, and dog. So these four are highly, highly important. If you can't memorize everything, that is okay. But if you can't memorize the first four, that is going to be a big problem in your examination. So these are straight questions, so, so I don't want you guys to miss these points. So I collected everything and I put it in one table. So this is highly essential for you. Then comes the different names of the diseases or their shapes and then their species in one table. Again, this will really help you. So this I think you can go through by yourself. But this point I'll focus more on. I'll stress more on this point. <coughs> okay, so we'll start one by one. So the first is E. histolytica. So the host is going to be human for E. histolytica. It uh, exhibits in two forms, either a cyst or a trobozoid form. So how do they look is something that is stressed more on examination. Cyst has four nucleus and trophozoid has a central karyozyme and two nucleus, binucleated. But the nucleus is kept somewhere away from the center that is eccentric nucleus. So this point is very important. So infective form is going to be cyst. So most of the time when in this table, when you see uh, parasites, uh, I, I don't think so you'll be getting a treatment as your MCQ. So totally I'm not going to uh, talk about the treatment at all. Almost very rarely you, talk, uh, you get a question regarding the treatment. So what you need to focus here is the host of the organism and the infective form of the organism. So these are the two re real points that the exam will be focusing on. And then the peculiarities about the organism. So even if you don't know the disease, the treatment, that is still fine. If you know the first four boxes of this table, so you should have your exam very smooth. 
Okay, so the reason why they're stressing more here is to reduce the chance of infection for others. So if you control it here, if you know what exactly is the infective form, you would know what exactly you are dealing with. So that is exactly where they will focus. So MCA always focuses on what exactly is necessary for the doctors here. Okay, so I'll start with again E stolitic I said cyst is the infective form. Now next is Negleria fowleri. This is called as brain eating amoeba. So those who swim in pond. So the history of swimming in pond is the most important point you'll be getting Negleria fowleri. So uh, those who swim in pond, they end up with something called meningoencephalitis. Meningoencephalitis. So you have to think about Negleria fowleri. So you have to know human is the host and trophozoite form is the infective form. So this is very important. Okay. So the E histolytica, one point I missed to say, other than causing intestinal amoebiasis, it causes amoebic hepatic abscess, amoebic liver abscess. So when you cut the liver and you see, you get a pus. That pus is called as ancovi sauce pus. An ancovi ancovi sorry ancovi sauce pus and Covey sauce pus in the liver. So this is very important. Okay, amoebic hep hepatitis, hepatic abscess. Okay, and the next one is Giardia lamblia. So Giardia lamblia, human, dog, and cat are the definitive host. Cyst is the infective host. So the cyst has four nucleus. It looks like uh, the trophozoite have flagella, four pairs with axostyle and sucking disc. This trophozoite looks like a monkey face or a tennis racket shaped appearance. So this appearance is more important in this Giardia lamblia. Two points are very important in Giardia lamblia. Number one is this appearance. Number two point is the metronidazole is the drug of choice. One drug of choice you need to know from the entire um, parasitology. It should be metronidazole for Giardia lamblia. If you forget this, definitely you can make mistake in this MCQ. So standardly, whenever you get a single question from um, what you call parasitology, that's most commonly metronidazole. Then we go to the next one, that is trichomonas vaginalis. Humans are affected. We already talked about it. We talked about this in uh, bacteriology. So I'm not going to go much further. So tropozoites is the infective form. That's all you need to know. Okay. Then we have um, then we have Trypanosoma cruzi, Trypanosoma cruzi. So Trypanosoma cruzi definitive host is going to be human. A reservoir host is going to be mammals. Intermediate host is going to be redovid bug. So this is where the MCQ falls for redovid bug. This is the intermediate host. And then the infective form is called as metacyclic Trypoma astigotes. Metacyclic trypoma astigotes. So that is called as, that is the infective form. So it causes something called Chagas disease. So the entry point of the disease is called as Chagoma. And there is a lid swelling that is happening in this eyelid swelling that is called as a Romana sign. So these are the key points from parasitology. I cannot give mnemonics for parasitology and consume a lot of time here. The mnemonics are most needed for the bacteriology, not for others. Next is Balantidium coli. Reservoir host is pig. Cyst is infective form. A revolving motility is seen. So it is largest in science. So there was a box we saw regarding the motility table. If you guys remember, motility table. If you go back and see in that box, again, all these motility points will be there. Next is Toxoplasma gondii. Definitive host is going to be cat and intermediate host is going to be man and rat. Tachyzoids is the infective form. Sabin film and dietus will be positive. Okay, that's it about Toxoplasma gondii. It is going to cause something called Toxoplasmosis. I said AIDS patients, Toxoplasmosis is very important. Okay. Then we talk about Plasmodium. Plasmodium causes malaria. So there are basically five forms and their pigment colors are given here. There is falciparum, vivox, malaria, uh, ovale, malaria and nolacy. So about nolacy, we don't know the pigment color. So we're not talking about that. 
So falciparum is dark brown, vivax is yellow, yellowish brown, ovale is dark yellow brown, and malaria is dark brown again. So these points must be stressed, very important. So infective form is almost all the time sporozoids, but only uh, exception is when you get malaria because of transfusion, blood transfusion, you are going to have hypnozoids as infective form. Transfusion malaria, hypnozoids. But I don't think so. You'll be getting question in that. So you could straight away follow sporozoids in almost all the cases. And then the next is tenia. Tenia saginata. It causes tenias. Humans or definitive host picks or intermediate host. Eosinophilia, elevated IgE levels of the chief hematologic findings. All these are important. Then we have tenia solium. Humans or definitive host. Again, picks or intermediate host. So you need to know it causes CNS infection in India. And it causes teniasis and neurocysticercosis. So these two box, I think you should stress a lot. Then followed by echinococcus granulosis. Highly, highly, highly important. H. nana, D. lactam. All of this, I think, all of this should be in your fingertips before going to the exam. These all are very important. If you get two questions from parasitology, one of the question is going to come from this table most of the time. Because this is highly important. So echinococcus granulosis, you should know that it causes hydratidsis disease. Uh, H. nana, you should know that it causes hymenalopsiasis. Uh, D. lactam, you should know that it is going to cause megaloblastic anemia, vitamin B12 deficiency and megaloblastic anemia. This is very, very important. So these, this table is very important. You already have seen the different names for these. So this is fish tapeworm, dog tapeworm. So you should know the different names of them. So the, knowing this entire table is definitely going to help you in your examination. Okay. So go, when you read this, you should go back to the table. Now, if you see here, so tenia solium, if you see in this, solium is pork tape, uh, tapeworm, uh, saginata is beef tapeworm, D lactam is fish tapeworm, E. calencocus granulogus is dog tapeworm, and H. nana is dwarf tapeworm. This exact five points or being stressed out here as a table. There are still a lot of MCQs that can appear from this table, but almost the key points are here. So you can focus from this table. Now, So, so we talked till now about the key topics. Then this this should serve this box should serve as a extra box. If you skip this, that's still fine. So the diseases are cocoidiosis and microsporidiosis. So in cocoidiosis and microsporidiosis, the first one we have is the cryptosporidiosis, then isosporidiosis, and then cyclosporiosis, sarcosystiosis, and microsporidiosis. So I'm not going to talk, as I said, I'm not going to talk about the drug of choice. I'm rather going to focus on the features. The first feature, I think for examination purpose, I think uh, only a few points are important in this table. Uh, number one is the causative organism, no matter what. Cryptosporidiosis is cryptosporidium species. Isosporidiosis is isosporidium uh, belly. Uh, cyclosporidiosis is C. Uh, chitinesis. Sarcocystosis is by sarcocystis. And microsporidiosis is the microsporidiosis. Okay, so how they are going to ask you in the examination is they are going to give you a case. If it's the case is about cysto, uh, sorry, cryptosporidiosis, you are going to get, get a patient with this kind of presentation. Either a chronic diarrhea with small. I think most of the time you'll get chronic diarrhea with foul smelling stool, 
very important along with this false smelling spoon uh, stool patient is going to lose their weight there is small absorption and weight loss that is very important so if the patient presents with along with this if the patient presents with pain in abdomen so the t the type of pain they are going to describe you is going to be right upper quadrant pain because there is cholangiopathy that is going to happen in these patients so look for the hiv status in that patient if the patient is aids in aids they are going to talk about right upper quadrant pain otherwise they are going to talk about weight loss small absorption and foul smelling stool chronic diarrhea with foul smelling stool so i think of this entire table crypto sporidiosis is the most important one so if you want to focus on one point in this table focus on this entire crypto sporidiosis point totally this will really worth it and next is uh, if you see isosporidiosis it causes self limiting water diarrhea so i don't think so they are going to get that in your mcq they might focus more on this complication that is why complication is highlighted and here complication is very important hemorrhagic colitis and small absorption so out of which small absorption is a very common thing they might not ask so hemorrhagic colitis so isosporidiosis means you need to remember hemorrhagic colitis that is very important cryptosporidiosis means you have to remember galls uh, galls uh, gallbladder infection that is that is very important okay then going to the next one yeah going to the next one uh, cyclosporiosis means chronic fulminant watery diarrhea in aids patient again so you cannot find out by just uh, looking at the aids patients in the question and just like that uh, they are giving diarrhea so i don't think so cyclosporidiasis is going to be a question um so that you can i think you can ignore it sarcocystosis i uh, is uh, ingestion of undercooked pork or beef beef but uh, there are ra rather much more problems when you take pork and beef than this uh, sarcocystosis so again i don't think so they would focus more on this sarcocystosis also uh, but microsporidiosis is very important because this is going to cause something that is very essential that is very important that is granulomatous encephalitis so granulomatous encephalitis is where you should focus aids patient with granulomatous encephalitis it is nothing other than microsporidiosis so blindly without even looking at other options you can go for this answer microsporidiosis so out of this entire table i think i would stress more on i would stress more on uh, crypto iso and micro so only these three only these three i'll be stressing more on okay so these three if you know this table would be covered am i clear till now everyone am i clear yeah good so this totally ends our discussion we are done with all the topics so there are some miscellaneous points but i think uh, this is for your revision you should go through these points for revision so i'm not going to read these points for you uh and yeah uh there is no uh, i think this time i'm not going to explain this image back because one thing i'm sure is uh, till now till date almost almost uh, image based question did not appear in uh, microbiology yeah almost uh, till now image based question did not appear in microbiology when they appeared also it was uh, one time there was a negative strain a negative staining of the capsule was asked and uh, maybe one or two i think one or two questions have been asked so if you focus if you focus more on this image based questions uh, you would be losing a lot of time in the last minute revision so i want you to do image based set by yourself when uh, so i have provided all the key topics that you need to know in image based questions but i want you to open up google and search at least five images for each of the topic that is given here 
and I want you to see them very clearly along with your notes. You should keep your notes open along with your notes. You should memorize. So if you don't do that, this is not going to stick in your brain. Same like pathology. Pathology, if you don't memorize the appearances, that is not going to stick to you. So I'm not going to discuss now about the image bank. I would focus more on see if hardly you can get one image question. Hardly. So before going to image bank, you should make sure that you memorize everything that we discussed today. So miscellaneous, if you skip, that is still fine. If you don't read miscellaneous, that is still fine. If they ask, for example, 15 questions in micro, almost more than 10 would cover from what we discussed now. Easily, almost more than 10 would cover from them. So in such place, you should be very sure of getting that 10. So the rest five can appear from anywhere. So if you skip the miscellaneous, that's still fine. So I want you to be sure that you don't miss any single point in bacteriology. That is the specific reason why I added a image based section in this edition in microbiology. So in, in this image, only five images I'm going to tell you that is that have appeared and that is very, very essential for you. The uh, rest is up to you to read. The first, yeah. the first important image is the first important image for you is this cuneiform management or Chinese letter pattern in Corini bacterium diphtheria. Is the first important MCQ uh, image based question I want you to focus on. Then, <coughs> the second important image that I want you to focus is Proteus, Dyne phenomena. This is the second important image base I want you to focus. The third important is Pseudomonas aeruginosa. Pseudomonas aeruginosa. This is the third important one. So yellowish green color, that is Pseudomonas aeruginosa. The fourth important one is Borrelia burgdorferi. Borrelia burgdorferi. The fifth important one is Ascaris that you should see. That you should check by yourself. Ascaris. That is very, very important. Ascaris lambricoides. That is very, very important. So I think uh, these are very essential. And one more, I think, uh, spirochete you should check by yourself. The negative staining. I think I did not include the negative staining here. Uh, in internet, as much as possible, look for the negative staining. So only these five important points have come in different format of examination still now. Uh, but still, I collected from each topic one one image. But this is again, I'm saying this is not enough at all. So if you go for the images, that will take one more complete day for you. There's that much amount of images to discuss. But at the end of the day, how much do you remember at the time of examination only matters. So if you don't exercise it by yourself, that is not going to stick in your brain. So as much as possible, wherever possible, I gave mnemonics everywhere. And wherever possible, I said, what not to study and what to focus on. So I think in this way, your microbiology will go very smooth and hopefully you will not miss any point in microbiology. Is, is that clear? Is everyone okay? So are we done with microbiology? Is everyone okay? So if you study the way I said, any nook and corner, you should not have any trouble in microbiology. It should go very smooth in your examination. Am I clear? Okay, good. So we can end our session now. Thank you so much.